Soil is the most important component if you want to grow successful plants. Now, you can amend and build your soil and make it into something fabulous, but it really helps to know what you're starting with. And the only way to do that is with a soil test. So join me today as I start that process. I'm Gardner Scott. And to be quite honest, soil tests for me have always been one of those do as I say and not as I do kind of things. In my Master Gardener training, I learned about the importance of soil tests, particularly for new gardeners who are building a new garden. But I also learned about amendments, and I learned about some simple tests to get an idea of what kind of soil you have. So, my previous gardens, I've just thrown a lot of compost and manure and organic matter into my soil and then grew my gardens. But for my new garden space, I really want to know what my soil is, how fertile it is. Is it clay? Is it sand? What do I have to work with? Now, I can take a cursory look and get a basic idea, but the best way is with a professional soil test. A professional soil test is conducted by a laboratory, often at a university, and it tells you just about everything you want to know about your soil. Now, some of the most important aspects like pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium levels in your soil well, you can get inexpensive tests at a nursery or a garden center, and that'll give you a pretty good idea. But as far as the structure of your soil and the overall fertility, the only way to find that out is with a professional soil test. Finding a laboratory for your soil test is relatively easy. Just do an online search. I just entered in Colorado soil test and got a number of results. The first one was a commercial laboratory and the second one was the university laboratory. So I'm choosing to go with Colorado State University. I liked their site. It gave me all the information I needed in how to get my sample and then how to send it in. And I'll be showing you all those steps because that's probably the process you will have to follow. You might be lucky enough to have a laboratory within your own city and you can just drop it off. Some places have free soil tests. I have to pay for mine. But that's something that you'll have to find out by just doing a little bit of searching for your area. The laboratory where I'll send my sample in the directions recommends taking a sample from 5 to 15 different locations, depending on the size of the space that I'm choosing to garden. Now, I'm hoping to do most of this space. And even though I'll be doing raised beds in certain areas, I'd like to get an idea of the general soil that I have. So I'll be doing probably about seven or eight samples from different spots. And I'm testing the soil that the roots are going to be growing through. That means I want to dig down about six inches to take the soil. So I'll dig a hole, go down six inches to get some of the sampling in that area, go to another area, dig down, get some soil there, and then I'll be putting it into a clean container. This is a food safe bucket. So I'll be taking all of those samples and then mixing them together in this bucket. I want the soil samples to be as clean as possible, avoiding any contaminants that I can. So, I'll be using clean tools. You don't want to use any rusty implements because that can throw the test off. If you fertilized within about the last month, you really shouldn't be doing a soil test that soon because 
whatever you used as a fertilizer will throw off the results of the test. The plants that might be growing on the surface will throw off the results of the test. So I'm actually going to use this shovel to scrape off those plants. I would have to pick them out later anyway, so it just helps me get a cleaner soil sample. So with clean tools, a clean container, no fertilizer in at least a month, the plants removed, now I'm ready to actually take my soil sample. My soil is pretty compacted, so to get the best reading, I'm actually going to start by digging a hole down to the depth I'm looking for. Because trying to take a sample with just this first load is probably not going to give me the best reading. But I'm going to dig down to about six to eight inches just so this is easier to work with. And from there, I'll take my sample. You want a vertical sampling of the soil in this hole. If you just collect what's at the six inch level, it's really not giving you a good idea of the entire area. If your soil isn't as dense as this, you might be able to just scoop out one trowel load of soil and dump it in your bucket. For me, I'm going to have to scrape it and then collect the soil at the bottom to put in my bucket. At this point, one cup, maybe two cups of soil is really all you need. Remember, we're going to be mixing this with all the other samples in the potential garden space. I'm going to repeat this process in a big circle, going about 10 feet between the testing spots. This should give me a pretty good idea of the soil I have in this area, because this is the area that I'm anticipating I will be doing some growing in the ground. For the other areas where I'll be putting raised beds, it's not as critical knowing what the components within the soil are because I'll be creating my own soil within those beds. But, but for this, I'd like to get an idea of what I'm working with by taking a number of samples throughout this space. I ended up taking nine total samples in this area. And I want to mix all those samples together. Again, using the clean trowel, trying to avoid any contamination that might be on my hands, like the sunscreen that I applied before I started digging. You want to keep this sample as clean as possible. In reviewing the directions, it says I only need to take two cups of all this soil that I mixed from the different holes. So I'll just drop this down onto paper towels, which are also recommended because you don't want to put this soil onto a surface that might be contaminated with something. Two cups on paper towels, and now we'll go through it looking for little bits of root or stem, basically trying to pick out any plant material. If you find any rocks, remove those rocks. If there's clods that are clumped together, you can break them apart. The idea is to try to get just the soil. We don't want roots, we don't want rocks, and we want everything broken up pretty well. And then after we do all of this cleaning, we'll spread it out on these paper towels and let it air dry for a bit before we send it off. I've let this air dry all day. You really want a dry sample. 
And then I've put my name and address on this zip seal bag as recommended. And then I'll just load all the soil into the bag and send it off to the laboratory. Now, if you have a local extension office, check with them because they might have the bag all ready to go and they might actually take your sample and save you from all the effort of sending it to a laboratory. Be sure to get all of the soil in the bag because some of this that's left behind on the paper towel, the finer particles, that is actually important in the analysis to give an idea of the texture of your soil. My sample is bagged up. Now it's in an envelope ready to send to the laboratory. Be sure that you keep your sample in a cool location before you send it off because excessive heat can affect the nitrogen readings of the lab analysis. And that's one reason why you want to air dry the soil before you bag it because if you dry it in the oven, you're not going to get an accurate analysis. It's probably going to be about two weeks before I find out the results of the soil in my new garden. And when I do find out, I'll be sure and let you know. If you have any comments or questions about testing the soil in your garden, well then just let me know below. If you want to see more of these videos, well then subscribe to the Gardener Scott channel if you haven't already done so. And if you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up and share it. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.